the nation of Israel and the children of Ephraim, which are the Israelites, were joined unto idols. Can you read it? Let him alone. He said what? Let him alone. He said cut them off because they were joined into idols. So now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So that one nation of people or the Gentiles that Paul is writing to in 1 Corinthians, those same people that were joined into idols are talking about the Israelites. So keep reading. Verse 3. Come. Wherefore I give you to understand. So I give you to understand. That no man speaking by the Spirit of God. Uh -huh call of Jesus accursed. Right, so that was it on that. So let me get 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. So these Gentiles that Paul is writing to are the nation of Israel. They are Israelites. Remember we read in, in uh, Acts chapter 2 you had Jews and Israelites that were scattered to other lands that spoke different languages and that took on the customs of those Gentile nations. So the Gentiles that Paul is writing to are Israelites that were scattered in other lands that didn't know their heritage that kept the heritage of the other nations. Now we go keep we go continue to prove that to you. Let me get that first Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. Now you tell me who this is talking about. Keep reading. Moreover, brethren, uh -huh. I would not that ye should be ignorant. So Paul said again, brethren, which are the Israelites, I would not have you to be ignorant that what? How that all our fathers that all our fathers, that's possession. He said that all our fathers we were under the cloud. Were under the cloud and, and, did, and all passed through the sea. And passed through the what? And all passed through the sea. But wait a minute, I thought Paul was writing to the Corinthians, which are which are Gentiles. Right. So why is Paul telling the church, the church at Corinth, that our fathers passed through the sea? Right. What race of people passed through the Red Sea? The Israelites during what time? I'm sorry. During what time period? I'm sorry. The, the Exodus, yeah. right? When yeah. Moses split the Red Sea, right? Yeah. So if these are Gentiles, why is Paul telling these Gentiles that our fathers passed through the Red Sea? Right. That must mean those Gentiles are who? It could be, yeah, you're right. It could be speaking to Jewish, like... Uh, Hellenized Jews. It has, yeah. it has yeah. to be. Hellenized yeah. Jews. It, it's not could be. It has to be because the Israelites were the only people that passed through Moses through the Red Sea. Can you read it? Come. Verse 2, and we're all baptized unto Moses. Unto Moses? What race of people was baptized unto Moses? Was the whole world, was every nation baptized unto Moses? Yeah. No, that was only the nation of Israel. So who was Paul speaking to in the book of Corinthians? Sir! Uh, I, I, I hear I, I, I don't, I don't know. Know. Yeah. I mean, that's the Bible. So you don't know. Really. I mean, that's, that's your interpretation. But the it. thing is... But the Bible says there's no private interpretation. Right. So there's, the thing is, if you don't agree with us, you would have to break that down and give the proper understanding. Oh, sure, sure. I agree. So, there's okay. only one correct interpretation. Okay, so but what's the I, correct? I just don't think that you But the thing it. is, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So what is the proper understanding? Who is Who are these people that pass through the Red Sea that Paul is speaking to in the book of Corinthians? He certainly can be talking about, like, the Jewish heritage. Who right? else? But, who, but like... But, I just don't think the your is, overall no, but, message, but, though, okay, that, but that's, like, this is only for one group of people. But that's fine, Instagram. but the thing is, you would have to go, let me get uh, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. I'm trying to figure out who else went through the Red Sea. Hold on, can I get uh, Isaiah chapter yeah. 8, verse 10? I'm sorry, guys, I got to go. But, oh, we know you got to um, go. Really let, me, let, <laughs> let me get, let me get <laughs> Proverbs 28, oh, verse 10. Sure. And that's fine though, but we just want you to know it's the book of Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. Uh -huh. The wicked flee uh -huh. when no man pursueth, right? But the righteous are, are bold as lion. Right, so according to the Bible, like you said, we've been cutting you up the whole time, proving to you that those Gentiles were the Israelites. Are you saying that I'm the wicked flooding when no one pursues? <laughs> right. Why are you leaving? My That's a beautiful dialogue. Right, right, right. Wait, hold on, before you go, right? Because he, he broke these scriptures down perfectly as according to the Bible, right? I but you said he. That, but yeah. I, this, been, yeah. You said he didn't he quite nail it. Isaiah 28. What about. What is it that he said that he didn't quite nail? Because he just read the Bible. Well, there are a lot of things there that, like, you guys didn't really have a good answer for. What? What's like, one of them? The Canaanite woman. Who, what about it? Jesus says. 
right as her way. But did he say that she was going to inherit the kingdom of heaven? Right. And, the, and the, her faith is great. All right. Yeah. Let me get, let me get, uh, yeah, you got the Isaiah 28. He yeah. also talks to a Samaritan woman so, at the well. Who is this? Who okay, hold on. That, we going to break it down. earlier that that, that was not her. Um, no, but you have to understand, you had different nations of people yeah. that lived in the land of Samaria, right? During, one, during a period of time, it tells you in Isaiah 7 and 9 that the children of Ephraim in the northern kingdom dwelt in Samaria. And, but when they were taken captive by the Assyrians, they tell you that the king of Assyria placed different nations in that land. So you had different groups of people that were in the land of Samaria. But now let's let's show you let's show we gonna show you what you gotta do. If you don't agree with us and you claim that we're breaking it down wrong, yeah. we gonna see what the Lord said that you gotta do. Bring that out. Book of Isaiah chapter twenty eight verse ten. For a precept must be upon precept. So the Lord said precept must be upon precept. Read precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So if you go prove us wrong, and if you don't agree with us, you have to go precept upon precept to prove how we wrong according to the Bible. Because if not, then you just going based off your own understanding. Let me get Isaiah chapter eight, verse 20. Hey, I'm trying to figure out who the fathers are. Who else went through the Red Sea? If you could show us who, what other nations went through the Red Sea, then maybe we'll concede, but you probably can't. Let me get the, 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 the idea that you're talking about is the old covenant. Like, and what's who's the new covenant for? The, new covenant the book of Isaiah, like chapter Jesus 8, verse 20. Hold on. Give salvation to all. Okay. Who but this is the thing that we go surrender the life to them. All right, so we're going to break it down for you because we have the proper understanding because we go precept upon precept and we actually keep the laws and commandments that God gave to the nation of Israel. So we're going to break it down for you. So let's read that. Hebrews, which one, Hebrews? No, uh, Isaiah 8 and 20. Huh. He got Hebrews. You got Hebrews? Isaiah 8 and 20. Huh? To the law and to the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. Because the whole time you've been up here, we've been speaking according to this word. Like we've been going precept upon precept, but you haven't shown us according to the Bible how we will be wrong. So you will have to show us the scriptures to prove that we wrong according to the Bible. So can we? Canaanite woman? No, you, that's not. Still haven't given me but a response. To that. We go get to that. But we go get to that. But that's not a valid point by saying that she go inherit the kingdom when that's not in there. Christ never said that she was going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's not in there. He said, yeah. "Great is your faith." I think your interpretation about Gentiles too no, is a little no, shaky. but it's not. But my where does it say that she got salvation? That's what I'm saying. She didn't get salvation. She had faith, and her daughter was fixed, right. not her. She didn't get nothing. She acknowledged that yeah. she was a dog. Exactly. That's what she did. Now she said, "I am a dog, and I get crumbs." So you don't believe that she's in the kingdom of heaven. Hold on. It, they, they don't say that. Nowhere in the Bible do we say Don't say it. That. Yeah. If you now can show us, then we'll, we'll continue. Right. Now let's finish reading. So we're going to break all that down for you. Keep Isaiah 8 and 20. To the Lord, to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. So we have to speak according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. So if you want to prove us wrong, you have to bring out the precepts. Now let's go to um, that new covenant. Let's see who the new covenant is for. Hebrews 8 and 8. Let's go now let, Hebrews. Me, let, me get, let me get the uh, book of John chapter 4. And we're going to go into the Samaritan woman, right? Because he believed that the Samaritan woman is a Gentile nation. We're going to break it down for him. So bring that up. I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, uh -huh. by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. So he is, Christ is the mediator of a better covenant. Read. Which was established upon better promises. Now you keep saying that you don't agree with our understanding. So we're going to read this scripture, and we want you to give your understanding. Right. Keep reading. For the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. So the Lord said, the days come, that's a future prophecy, right? You read it? When I will make a new covenant. So the Lord said he's going to make a new covenant with who? With who? With all. 
with the house of Israel. No, with all. With the house of Israel. <laughs> he said with all. With the house of Israel. With the house of Israel and who else? And with the house of Judah. So the house of Israel represents the northern kingdom that was cast away. And we read that in the book of Hosea. And the house of Judah represents the southern kingdom, which okay. represents all the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay, may I ask a question really quick? Okay, but hold on. Before we get okay, to that, sure. according to that scripture that we just brought out, who is the new covenant for? Well, again, I disagree with you guys, but it's, uh, it's going to say the house of Israel. No, 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 no. You know what you're doing? Yeah. When you don't go Isaiah 8 and 20, according to the testimony, no. you're not a devil. But you know why? Hold on, listen. Do you know why? Because I'm reading it verbatim as it's written. Sure. But you sure. said, well, it says that, but my interpretation, that's what you just did. No. So no. That, who does the new covenant say it's for? Okay. What? The what house is, of who? Hold on. Can you, can you admit okay, it? Okay. It's the house of Israel. Okay, I already said that. All right. And who else? Because there's two, there's, there's two different, uh, it says the house of Israel, and who else? In the house of Judah. Okay. Can, so can you admit that? Sure. All right, thank you. Uh, can, okay, so my question now, is. Now, uh, my question is, which scripture says that the new covenant is for all? Right. We just showed you that the new covenant now, is only for the northern and the southern kingdom of the nation of Israel. That's what I'm going to ask. All right, go so ahead. there's a parable in the Bible that Jesus gives uh -huh. about the wedding feast. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you have a good response all cooked up. Now, we, the Bible but, has a good response. No, we don't yeah, got well, The Lord has a good response. In the Bible, uh, that, you know, that that parable, right, is we invite some people, they make some excuses, so we invite, like, all other people so, that weren't a part of, the, right. you know, the kingdom. Cool. So, so we're going to get straight to the point. Who is it? Can, can every nation of people on earth get the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. Let me get Revelation 21 verse 4. Yeah. We're going to cut straight to the point. And then, now let's bring this out about the Samaritan woman real quick. What verse you want? Uh, start at verse 1. Let me ask him a quick question. So the kingdom of heaven, quick question. Yeah. So church will have you believe that the kingdom of heaven only has one gate. Does that sound right? And it's just it's coming to the word. Sure. So sure. how many gates do you think are in the kingdom of heaven? Um, Wouldn't it be one pearly gate? I guess it would be one. One well, gate for everybody, uh, right? Jesus calls himself the door. So it's okay. one. So one, one gate. One then. gate. Okay. Through Jesus. Jesus. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So let's bring this out. Four, one. Yeah. Let's try one. Book of John, chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not. Hold on. Let me see what I want. Uh, I want to jump straight to the point. Uh, yeah. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 5. So this is going into the, the woman at the wood, the Samaritan woman, right? Here we go. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, uh -huh. which is called Shakar, right? near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave unto his son Joseph. Right. Now Jacob's well was there. So Jacob's well was there, right? So we're going to get into it. Keep reading. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. Uh -huh. Then cometh a woman of Samaria. To then cometh a woman of Samaria. So you believe that this woman of Samaria is a Gentile woman, right? I guess what you're saying, what you're gonna say is, and I, I, I think this, I'm not gonna uh, say nothing. Uh, gonna, let me let me yeah. say what I think you're gonna say. I'm not being, well, look, I'm not trying to be. Rude I'm not. I'm saying I'm not gonna say. We gonna read yeah. the Bible. We gonna see what the Lord says. What you're saying is, you think that this woman. <laughs> Is a descendant of Israel because of the, the, I don't think the well. I think that's a good. No, I, I don't think nothing. We go read it and we want to see what you think. So let's keep reading. Come. Then cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, being a Jew, askest drink? Of me, which am I, which am a woman of Samaria. Right. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Because the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Because we read in Hosea, the fourth chapter, the northern kingdom went into idolatry. And the Lord told them to leave them alone. So there was a split between the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. Right? Keep reading. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, uh -huh. and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he ha would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, 
and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. Now let me ask you a question. The woman, the Samaritan woman, was speaking to Christ. And read that part again. Let's see what she said. Come. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? What did she say to Christ? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Now why did the Samaritan woman say to Christ, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Yeah. Now let me ask you a question. Who is Jacob the father of? Uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. As, okay, so if she said our father Jacob, that means she would have to be a what? She would have to be an a, a, a Israelite. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think that's a good point. Right. I just, right. I, I don't agree with the idea of that, like, the gospel is just for I don't think you what guys is have the in that. So, so, you think, so you think the kingdom's for everybody? Yes. Alright, watch this. This is the book of Acts chapter 1. Let me get Revelation okay, 21 then, and 2. Alright, sorry, this, this, this has got to be the last because right, right, my good. wife has been yeah, waiting good. really patiently. Yeah, okay, that's cool. And, you we know, we're going right? to give you two more, alright? Okay. And we appreciate the time, but we're going to give you two more. We're going to show you some real quick. It's the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So why did the apostles ask Christ if he was going to restore the kingdom to the nation of Israel? Well, they were if looking they, for a, a political they, here. But if, what, why did they say that if the kingdom was for every nation? Right. right. Why did they say, Lord, when are you going to restore the kingdom for the whole world? Because <laughs> they don't want that. They want to, they were living in under Roman oppression. Okay, so and they don't want they want Israel to be a nation again. But Jesus has something better for them. He has the forgiveness of sin. Okay, well we go we go get straight to the he point. Just read it in, in Hebrews 8. Right. <laughs> he had a better promise. <laughs> right, so let me let me get Revelation 21 to so this, is, this is speaking about the kingdom of heaven. Right. Right? So I want you to, to tell me if every nation of people can get into the kingdom of heaven. And this is that question I asked you. How many doors are there in the kingdom of heaven? Let's go answer it. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 12. And had a had a wall great and high. So we're saying the kingdom of heaven is going to have a wall great and high. And what else? And had 12 gates. So the kingdom of heaven has 12 gates. We, and at the gates, 12 angels. Right. And names written thereon. So now we said it had 12 gates. And at each gate, it had a name on it. What does it mean if it had it has a name on it? Uh, it's referring to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, let's keep reading. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel? So according to the Bible, who was the kingdom of heaven for? Is that for every nation? Or is it for the 12 tribes of the children of Israel? Well, just because they have the names of the 12 tribes doesn't mean that it's not for like So, okay, let me ask you a question. If you are not an Israelite, which gate are you going to, right. to, enter, to enter into the kingdom of heaven? I don't know. You don't know? You know why you don't know? Because you can't. According to the Bible, only, would it, okay, explain what that means then. I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. But the, like you're saying I can't go through one of those gates that, because so, I don't, like the, what gate are you guys going through? I'm going through the gate of Judah. Okay. What gate are you going through? I'm going through the gate of Gad. Hey, Lord willing, we going through the gates uh, our child. What, oh, get, yeah. what get you going through? I'm going through Ephraim. What get you going through? Yeah, Lord willing. Yeah. So we know what get we going through. Come I'm asking man. you. So we what get you, yeah, what get you going through? Let's show him where he's going to be yeah, without the gate. That's what we want to know. What this, get you going through? Look, it's Revelation 11, right? It says, there was given me a reed like unto a rod. So we're going to show you where you going to be at in the other Gentiles in the kingdom of heaven. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God. So what we just uh, read in Revelation 21, that's the temple of God. That's the, the holy uh, kingdom that is only for the nation of Israel. Can you read it? And the altar, and them that worship therein. And we ought to go be the ones that's going to worship therein, the nation of Israel. Right? Can you read it? But the court which is without the temple. So the court that is without the temple, that's outside of those gates that we just read about, 
leave out. Leave out. And measure it not. Measure it not, because what? For it is given unto the Gentiles. It is given to who? Unto the Gentiles. So that's where the Gentiles go be. The Gentiles cannot enter into the gates that belong to the nation of Israel. The Gentiles are going to be outside the kingdom of heaven. Right. Right? So do that. That, that's the proper understanding of the scripture. Okay. Whether you agree or not, you can agree or disagree, but that's that's well, the Lord. I would also say that you know you have the improper understanding of the scripture. But the thing Dang. is, but this is the thing that we just read. You can say all day that we have the improper understanding, but if you can't prove, let me get First there's, Thessalonians. There's a lot more. of things that I brought up that you guys haven't. No, we hey, we could have. Hey, look, going, we could have everything so that I you brought out. Everything. You brought out the Samaritan well, I mean, woman. You, have a response, you brought out the new. But you brought out the new covenant. Hey, what about correct. Deuteronomy twenty three and one? Hey, look, watch this, God. Hey, look, watch this, though. Look, y'all see this? First Thessalonians five and one. Hey, look, what? Look, watch this. If you take a picture of the bottom of that shirt, you go on YouTube. In a couple weeks, and you're gonna see this on YouTube, and see what the people agree with on this channel, with okay. this conversation. Okay. okay. Now let's, let's see if the people up. agree with you, or if they agree with us. Okay. Let's bring, well, they ain't even agree with us. It's agree with us. Well, with the Bible, Lord. right? Because all we did was read scripture, and we got precept upon precept, like the Bible told us to do. Now read that. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-one. Uh -huh. Prove all things. Wait, what does he have to do? Prove all things. Now he can just say, "I don't agree with y'all." Prove all things. The Lord right. said. You have to prove. You can say I don't agree all day, yeah. but if you don't have the scriptures and a proper understanding to prove us wrong, the Lord said, "Read, prove all things. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And what is good is telling the truth of the Bible. What's good is going precept upon precept, like the Lord told us to. And if you can't do that, then you can disagree, but you will be found a liar, and the true servants of the Lord will be found faithful in that. All right. All right? Yeah, but, but, hey, uh, who's your name? Sean. 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 All right, Sean, yeah. all right, you can have a good day, and yeah. Lord willing, you can be our servant on that day. And you can serve the nation of Israel, right? right? But hey, look, we ain't gonna hold you hostage right now. Okay. So you can, you know what I'm saying, you can uh, enjoy the rest of your night, all right? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Thank all you right, so much. Care. Yep. Take care. All right. All day. Hey, hey, man. That, hey, look. Close this out. That's what we do out here on these streets. We cut up these heathens. They can agree or they can disagree. Right. But at the end of the day, we gonna speak thus saith the Lord. Right. Alright? Hey, but with that, if we're gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Uh -huh. Right? We're gonna say death and destruction to the children of Edom. Right. Death and destruction to all these other nations right. that had our people in captivity. Right. That's right. We're gonna say Kwame Yashala to the nation. Kwame Yashala. Kwame Yashala. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.